short, wide and chunky versus tall, thin and fast rolling. What's the difference in performance between these wheels and tire sizes? Well, it's pretty similar to me and you as human beings. The shorter, stronger guys are gonna be better for heavier loads, while the faster rolling, thinner guys are gonna be good for long distance efficiency. You may have a bike that has 20 inch tires and another bike that has 29 inch tires. What's the difference between these two? Well, there's a couple things. And after this video, you're going to have a better idea of which wheel and tire size is best for you and which wheel and tire size is best from situation to situation, terrain to terrain. So first, I'm going to show you two polar opposites. We have our 20 inch wheel with a four inch wide chunky tire on it. And we also have our 700C wheel with a 32C tire on it. Starting off with our chunky tire here, a tire and wheel setup like this is going to be good for a couple things. First thing is that 20 inch width is great for handling. The smaller the wheel size, the more nimble it is and the easier the bike is going to be to maneuver and throw around overall. A tire with this much volume is also to your benefit in the sense that it has a wide variation of feeling that you can run. A tire like this is going to say an a PSI range on the side. For example, this tire says five to 30 PSI. That means you can run anywhere between five pounds per square inch all the way up to 30 pounds. Within that range, you are going to see a wide array of performance overall. For example, if I were to run five to 10 PSI in this wheel and tire setup, it would be a lot softer and mold to the terrain that I'm riding on better. I'd want to run a pressure range around there if I'm on sand or snow to really float on top of that terrain versus cut in and dig into it, digging myself into a hole. Now, if I was on road with this tire, I'd want to run closer to 25 to 30 PSI in it. Reason being is that will hold its shape a lot better with more pressure and you're going to be rolling a lot faster the stiffer the tire and wheel setup is overall. Now. On the other end of the spectrum here, we have our 700 by 32 C tire and wheel setup here. You'll notice that is a heck of a lot thinner and a bigger circumference overall versus what we just looked like. A tire like this is going to take a lot more pressure. Tires like this, you're going to want anywhere between 65 and 95 PSI on average to make that a very stiff feeling tire. These wheels are built around efficiency and you'll notice the tire is too when it comes to its tread pattern here. There's not a lot of knobs sticking off it, more so just lines within the tire to give you a little bit of grip on the asphalt. Road-based tires rely on the terrain you're riding for grip, while off-road-based tires rely on the chunky tread pattern to dig into whatever you may be riding for the grip. So that's one big difference there. So let's talk more about wheel sizes overall. You briefly heard me mention how that 20 inch wheel is easy to throw around and just more nimble overall than its bigger wheels. So what's the benefit of going up a bigger wheel? Well, there's a couple things. One being a lot better rotational mass. When you get a bigger wheel up to speed, it holds its speed a lot better. For example, in the mountain bike industry nowadays, you're seeing a lot of 29 inch wheel bikes. Reason being, they hold onto their speed very well and their rollover ability is far greater than their smaller predecessors. The way I like to think about it is if you have a divot like this, the bigger the wheel, the less that wheel is going to dip into the divot before it continues to roll. So in an off-road scenario, the bigger the wheel, the more smooth that terrain is going to feel. Keep in mind, the bigger wheel you have, the more likely it is going to be that it's harder to throw around, jump, and be nimble with overall. You're not here for mountain biking though. You're here more for your e-bike based riding and I understand that, but the mountain bike analogy is one that's very easy to understand when it comes to the benefit of a bigger wheel. Now, when we're talking on the road, you're not going to see near as much variation in size of your wheel here. Sure, you have your mini fat tire e-bikes with their 20 inch wheels, but if you want something that's a true road commuter, or urban related bike, chances are you're going to see 26 inches or above when it comes to that wheel size. A tire like this is not going to be the most comfortable over bumps 
and it's not going to give you a lot of traction when it comes to off-road riding. This is designed around rolling speed and efficiency. Because it has less tread, you're going to roll a lot faster without that rubber causing a lot of friction and slowing you down. Because of that, you can shorten your ETAs to wherever you may be going and ensure that you are fast rolling regardless of the road-oriented terrain you are on. Between these two, there is a lot of variation, so let me get those tires next. Next, we have two 27 and a half inch wheels. I really like the 27.5 wheels, reason being is their happy median between rolling speeds of the bigger tires and wheels, and also small enough that they're nimble to throw off a jump or get around a tight switch back corner in time. You'll notice the tread pattern is very similar to that road bike tire and wheel setup that we looked at, but there is a little bit chunkier tread. It's also two inches wide as opposed to the one inch wide tread we just looked at. So this has more volume and more tread overall. The wider the tire, the easier it's going to be to grip your terrain on corners. And the more volume the tire takes, the more comfortable of a ride it's going to be. The way I think about it, the more volume, the more cushion you have between you and the surface that you're riding on. Keep in mind, a tire like this, you don't want to run too low of a pressure on, otherwise you risk puncturing it. We also have a very similar wheel size on this, but you'll notice a lot chunkier terrain with this Maxxis Recon tire here. This is 2.8 inches wide, and it is basically Lego blocks' as tread perfect for digging into sand and loose corners and rolling fast off-road. Once you get this baby on-road, you are going to feel each of these little knobs slow you down, but those same knobs are what are digging into the ground, propelling you forward when you're on your off-road ride. Both of these tires have a decent amount of volume, so you're going to be able to run probably a 10 PSI difference in range and pressure. Um, but always start on the higher end of that pressure range just to ensure that you don't pinch flat or puncture the tire too easily. The next thing that I wanted to talk about regarding all these wheels, tires, volume, everything like that is how one of these tires can really change your bike overall. Regardless of the bike that you're on, keep in mind that changing up the volume of your tire, the tread pattern of your tire, or even the casing of the tire that will really help you change the performance overall. If I was on my off-road bike with a tire like this, and I went with, say, a two-inch wide tire with slightly less chunky tread overall, I'd notice a lot more fast rolling setup, but I wouldn't have as much comfort and confidence in those corners. So it is a trade-off. I don't believe there's one tire to rule them all, whether you're on-road or off-road. It really comes down to your riding style and what you value when you are riding. So, say I had a road bike now. A tire like this, I think is perfect for me. Reason being, I'm more of an off-road oriented rider and I do like something with a little bit more traction and squish to it than your average thin road bike wheel and tire setup. So something like this is still going to have more of an off-road oriented width but an on-road oriented tread pattern that's fast rolling and still will bite in the corners decently. What I'm getting at is you need to go out there and ride to really dictate what tire is right for you. If you find yourself sliding out on corners, on or off-road, you might want to lower that pressure a little bit or consider a wider tire. If you find yourself sliding out on a climb, you might want to consider a slightly grittier, chunkier tread pattern overall. All you need to do is go out and ride your bike and really pinpoint what you feel your tire and wheel setup is lacking and then order some tires from that point. Wheels, however, are not as easy to switch up because the frame of your bike is built around a certain wheelbase. With that being said, when you order your bike, ask yourself what you're looking to do. If you're looking for a lot of off-road charging, you might want 29 inch wheels to wagon wheel over all those divots in the ground. If you want something nimble around town that doesn't take up a lot of space, you might want a fast rolling 20 inch bike with that small tire and wheel setup. Again, there is no right tire or wheel setup for one person, and it's up to you to get out there and ride to figure out which one is right for you. 
With that being said, I hope you guys learned something today regarding tires and wheels. I always feel like tires and wheels are super fun to experiment with in the sense that something that doesn't cost a lot can drastically change the performance of your bike overall. Be sure to leave a comment below telling us what you'd like to see in future videos and what you feel like we could do in the future to benefit your experience on the e-bike. Subscribe for future videos, check out our written blog post on tires and wheels, and be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. With all of that being said, my name is Pierce Kettering with Electric Bike Report, and I'll see you next video.